Hey, Blender Bob here. Today we're going to talk about the destruction of the Santa Monica Pier in Pacific Rim Uprising, something I worked on a few years ago when I was at Method Studios. First shot, the pier was modeled and it was used in layout to make sure to get the kaiju at the right position and scale. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that was a lock off shot and they projected the plate on the geometry to create the camera movement. I actually modeled the entire pier and in this case it was used as a ground for the people running, the CG crowd. It was used to cast shadows and for the water simulation. But what you see in this shot is the real thing. 4 billion particles were used for the water simulation and that doesn't even include the white water. It's insane. For this one, everything before the leg passes is real and after this it's all CG except for the characters. And some props in the background that you can see far away. For this one, uh, all the destruction is CG, everything else is the plate. Now if I was the father, I wouldn't say try to jump, 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 because there's no way she could make it. I would say run the other way instead, it's safer. But hey, it's Hollywood. In this case, again, only the background stuff is real, everything else is CG. Now, did you see the little girl is now 10 feet away from the edge, but on the previous shot she was just on the edge? Hmm. And now apparently this family is too dumb to think that a kaiju has four legs. They will be greatly missed. This is what we're gonna talk about today, the broken pieces of wood, because a normal piece of wood is not that exciting for a tutorial. For this movie I didn't model anything in Blender because at the time I didn't even use Blender, but now I do and this is how I would have done it. And it's actually so much easier in Blender. Before you stop watching this clip thinking, well that's gonna be boring, well, keep watching because I'm sure you're gonna learn a few tricks. We'll start with a grid and we'll just keep what we need. We're gonna round the corners a little bit to create a bevel on the edge. Then we're gonna select random points and just move them in the vertical axis and the Z axis. We do this a few times, random selection. And then we select the edges and we extrude them. We need to make this flat. I have a hot key to do this, boom, here we go, and then we extrude again. We use grid fill to close the bottom, a little bevel, and this part is done. Now we're gonna work on the top part, we're gonna make it more interesting. Make sure you only move stuff in the Z axis. The reason we're doing this now is because it would have been impossible to extrude the edges before if it's too distorted. For the second part of the piece of wood, we're just gonna make a duplicate of this part. We're gonna select these points, scale them negatively and move them up and that's it, we have both parts. Don't forget to flip the normals because they're gonna be inverted. For the UVs, make sure you work on both surfaces at the same time so we can get a continuity in the texture. So what I do is I select a polygon from each face and I go select coplanar and that selects all these polygons. I just need to select the ones on the edges to make sure I cover everything that I want. And then I just use the project from view to make my UVs. To make sure I get the exact same scale for the other parts, I use a little gizmo on the top of the screen to move around. So this way I know it's gonna work perfectly. So same process for all the sides. Unfolding the UVs on Pacific Rim was a total nightmare because at the base I only had six pieces of wood. Because if you turn them upside down, it looks like a different piece of wood. So it looks like I have 12 but they all had different sizes and had to match the real ones on the pier. So I ended up with hundreds of pieces of wood that I needed to UV and scale and match and it was really, really long. It took a few weeks to get it done properly. And because we didn't want repeating textures, then we had to spread all these UVs on different UDIMs. So I ended up with like a hundred UDIMs for the wood. There was a lot of wood on the pier. By the way, when you have geometry like this that is repeated many times, you only need seven versions to make sure that you won't see a pattern. For example, for trees, if you make a forest, you only need seven trees of the same species. At different scale and different rotations, nobody will be able to tell that they are the same one repeating again and again. Okay, we're done with the outside part of the wood. Now what's left is all this crap here. That's the center part, all the spikes. So we can just select them very easily if you sync the UV editor with the view and we select them all and we just do an automatic UV on them and that's gonna be good enough. If we apply a grid texture, we can see we have a perfect continuity. But now what we should do is to connect all the sides together to make it one piece. To do this, I select an edge and I use the stitch in the UV menu and I put a hotkey. I use a hotkey for this tool because I use it all the time and because 
when you press S, in this case I use S, if I press it many times it shows me different possibilities of stitching and once I have the one I want I just press enter on the keypad and it's going to do the stitch. Now for this it's very important you do it in the right order because if you screw up like this you see it's not going to be aligned. So I need to, you see that's bad. So what I need is to get on the other side instead and do my stitch, you see it previews and now it works. And finally we can screw them up a little bit to break them, to make them less regular. So you just use the knife tool and you just cut, 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 cut and move around. But if you want to animate this part, make sure before you do a key shape, then you move your stuff around, you do another key shape, this way you can animate it. If you want to select the outside and inside polygons, the easiest way to do it is from the UV editor. Everything is already unfolded, so just select the polygons and assign the shaders. And that's it. It was actually much more complicated than that because we had two layers of wood, the first one on top and then vertical beams, then we had a slat of concrete, then we had a passageway under made of wood and metal and pipes and electric cables, and at the end we don't see any of this. I also modeled this building and it's full of details and we don't see any of it. Same building from another point of view, tons of details on the roof and we don't see any of it. For the building interior, this is a set extension, there was only two floors and we extended it to an awful lot. I modeled the entire room behind her and full of details and we don't see any of them and it's very blurry and foggy and if we rendered this in Blender we would have done it in Eevee in almost real time instead of 6 hours per frame. And it would have looked just as good, but Eevee didn't even exist when we did this. Well. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about how we did this shot, feel free to leave me a comment and I will be happy to answer you. Cheers! Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it! Uh, here we go! Ah.